Now, if you want to take out a loan backed by crypto assets to fiat currencies, there's not many options there, but MELD are working on that and we will be eventually able to take out fiat currency by providing our crypto assets as collateral. Now, there are a lot of benefits in regards to doing so, a lot of tax incentives and all sorts of really interesting mechanisms that you can play around with for taking out these loans. Now, the team are working with regulators to make that happen as well, and it it will obviously take a lot of time when you're having to deal with banks and getting banking licenses and everything else around it, but they are getting there. They have lots of options to do so. Now, I managed to catch up with the team at Rare Bloom, now called Rare Evo, to talk about where the project's at when their testnet is available, which it is now at the moment for their private testnet, so it will be public very soon. So they're hitting all their goals, but they're also going to talk about a couple of other little aspects of their project that are really quite interesting interesting too so let's get into it yeah, yeah gotta do it like that you've been listening to the learn cardano podcast gotta get it hype crypto is what we like but this is not investment or financial advice gotta do your research because it's risky we know it is this show is educational and it's informative crypto's the future really it ain't no debate I have the team from Meld here joining me on this episode at, at uh, Rare Bloom and we're going to find out a little bit more about the project in general as well as where the project is up to so we can potentially find out when we can actually use this particular protocol in the Cardano ecosystem. I have Matt here, Matt as well and also Charlie to talk about a little bit about the project. So gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. I okay. like to over collateralize the mats, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's good. So, over, ah, I, I see where you're going with that. Clever, all right. Can we just get a little bit of an introduction of who you are and how you're involved with the project? Mm -hmm. And we'll start with you, Matt. All right, my name is Matthew Nash. I started working at MELD uh, December of last year. And my, my titles are governance community, but let's just say it goes far beyond that because startup culture, you know, things just need to get done. So I'm the one who organized our attendance here at Rare Bloom and at CNFT Con last week. So, and a variety of other things. So, you know, they're just too long a list as a title. So. And uh, we've enjoyed many a panels together at CNFT oh, we Con. <laughs> yeah, we really got some good time oh, yeah. there, you know, uh, getting, getting a good, uh, you know, uh, moderator and uh, speaker relationship going and we really started to hit our groove at the second day with uh, Steve again over at Fi-Fi. We can keep going I think. Oh, yeah. and, and Matt, what about yourself? So uh, I do a good amount of community management on the Discord server. Uh, my main role is uh, as an ambassador. Um, also help users a lot, troubleshoot issues they might have with the Meld DAP. Uh, so yeah, basically like help them identify or articulate that nothing's really wrong um, because it's all good on chain. Just sometimes there's UI issues that need to be massaged out and be articulated to the dev team. So that's primarily what I do. Yeah, I work in the marketing department. I started as an ambassador last year, and uh, in um, earlier this year, in about uh, I think it was April May, I came on full time in the marketing team. So I help with the ambassador program, help with content management, and uh, and some of the content creation, social media. So wear a lot of hats and. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm loving it. So it's, it's pretty cool that you guys started as an ambassador on the project and then slowly worked your way into the project. So it must mean that you absolutely love what the project's doing and, and what uh, you're working for as well. So that's absolutely amazing. But for those that don't know what MELD is, can we just get that 30 second elevator pitch of what it is and what it's trying to achieve? I'll try and spread it between the three of us. It's a borrowing and lending protocol built on the Cardano blockchain. Uh, we hope to have uh, C2C uh, lending uh, functionality in testnet in January, and then crypto to fiat not long after that. We also are working on a two-way bridge from Polygon to bridge assets from Polygon to Cardano. Uh, really good that it's on Polygon too, because the fees are much lower than bridging from Ethereum to Milk Omeda to Cardano. People aren't used to fee gas fees. Yeah, yeah, we don't deal with fees. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we like those low gas fees. I also think it'll help bring a lot more liquidity into the ecosystem as well. So yeah, yeah. So on the other side of the DeFi protocol, uh, we've got the Meld Neo Bank, which is going to have an EMI Electronic Monetary Institute license in Europe, which is a European construct. It's a little less uh, comprehensive than a banking license. You can't do debt with that. So what we're going to do is we're going to marry that to the DeFi side where, the, where you've got some incredibly sophisticated debt tools. Think Aave, but a step further in terms of some of the features that we'll implement. Um, so that's going to be some really exciting stuff. It will seamlessly through the Meld app, all in the Meld app, very user-friendly, very um, 
crypto beginner friendly. Actually, it's going to be a massive tool for onboarding. Um, you'll be able to uh, seamlessly get uh, in Europe first uh, your fiat off of your uh, degen moves. Hopefully not too degen, but you know you've got your bags and you'll be able to lump them together into a into a debt product. You need to stay long on your crypto assets because anytime you decide to li liquidate your crypto assets for fiat, you incur a capital gains or a capital loss depending on the market. So right now it would be a capital loss for sure, but it allows you to be more efficient with your assets, uh, it uncomplicate your tax pic uh, picture, and basically just take out fiat against your crypto capital and be able to use it for where you want to be able to use it without having to, again, liquidate assets and incur tax taxable events. And that's, I think, what sold me on the project. Like, I didn't know that you could actually do that. I always thought that you had to sell your crypto asset to be able to exit and then do something in the real world uh, mm -hmm. with those particular assets. But this is a uh, over collateralized uh, positioning for that uh, debt that you might take on to be yeah. able to take out fiat. Now, some people don't understand what I just said then. Can we get an explanation of what that is and how that mechanic will work, trying to visualize it? So the reason everything's over collateralized is because anybody taking out at least a crypto to crypto loan is on a totally anonymized wallet or account. You don't have any KYC or knowledge of the entity really. The protocol is just like basically facilitating um, the transfer by way of being an intermediary between borrowers and lenders. And so the problem is with an anonymized system is that if you don't have an over collateralization locked into the, into the smart contract, anybody taking out an under collateral Last loan could just draw down the pro like the protocol, right? So in a totally anonymized system, you, it just doesn't work, right? You just get drained instantly. So you always have to have more collateral, and especially also to protect the solvency of the system. So you want to make sure there's no what we call global shortfalls, where you know the protocol the, the protocol ends up having less uh, outstanding uh, less collateral than the outstanding loans that are out there. So it's a it's a security mechanism. So yeah. Brilliant. And um, what you were saying, Matt, with the Polygon side of things, mm -hmm. that's quite interesting. So it's going to be what, a cross-chain platform yeah, two, as well? A two-way bridge. And the reason why it's necessary uh, is because if we're taking uh, crypto assets as collateral for fiat loans, we want to target like the main blue chip cryptos, things like wrap Bitcoin from the Ethereum side of things or Ethereum itself. Uh, basically, we want to be able to bring those um, very popular cryptos with a lot of liquidity and a lot of val and a lot of well-established value uh, into the Cardano ecosystem, so we can actually lend fee we could yeah lend fiat with those assets as collateral. Amazing. Now, um, Charlie, you're also talking about um, the whole European space with the uh, regulation and all those aspects. This whole platform would have to work with regulators quite quite thoroughly. We also mentioned KYC. What is it like? Uh, working with the regulators to get this platform up and running. I can imagine it'll be quite a headache, but uh, like, what, what, what's the experience been like? Yeah, so the, it's been a very um, arduous process and it's still ongoing. But <laughs> what we're doing is actually, we've got, um, we've got a very talented team headed up by Nahal, um, who's a, a recent um, chief strategy officer that came on. We're gonna do a profile on him. He's a, yeah, he's a strong in the traditional finance. We've got a lot of connections there already. And uh, we've got about four different tracks, uh, paths, if you will, to obtain that license. And um, so very optimistic that by Q1, which is on a roadmap, um, we'll have that established and we'll um, have that integrated into the uh, Meld app. And that'll be its own sort of animal where we can start reaching out to non-crypto consumers even to start using that, start getting used to the platform and um, you know scaling it out. So all of that's to, uh, you know, evolve yet as we get closer, but um, yeah, it's going to be a, it's, it's been a complicated thing, but it's also very well in hand and making progress. So I'm actually really optimistic about that side. I'm not worried about it. Going to the rest of the world, including the US um, where I live, uh, that's going to be the, the trick. We will have access to the DeFi side, no problem. There's no KYC required with DeFi. It's only the fiat side that's uh, going to require the uh, KYC and have to know the entities they're dealing with, right? So be it a human being, a company, or any other ent entity, institution. So, like, as soon as you do a crypto to fiat loan, you're facilitating that. We're basically playing in the established realm of TradFi, right? Where it's all KYC. But crypto to crypto, there's no, you don't have to. Brilliant. So that means um, uh, other countries could still take out uh, ADA to USDC loans or something yeah. like that. The protocol doesn't discriminate on locale, so... Absolutely brilliant. Okay, so we've got all this uh, happening in the background. 
when would we possibly be seeing the platform launch for users to be able to take out DeFi loans? Well, like I said, uh, crypto to crypto should be entering testnet in January. Uh, for crypto to fiat, I'm reticent to give a timeline. Um, we'll see how the whole regulatory picture goes. But other other people have managed to secure EMI licenses, and you know we'll we'll get there eventually. But it's just a matter of which of those four horses in the four horse race ends up finishing first. Some are better than others in that in that race, but at least we have four different ways of getting there. So we will be able to get an EMI license. It's just what form that'll take functionally could be different depending on which strategy ends up winning first. So. The crypto to crypto, um, the testnet, as I, I think you mentioned, is January 16th. So yeah, it'll be, um, that'll be in the first, I, I want to say the first two quarters of the of the year. I could be wrong on that. I'll have to double check. We just updated the roadmap and um, I'm fighting for this. We're all fighting for this to continually keep that up to date as we go. Um, that's something that we really want to prioritize for the for the community. The hard main launch deter is determined by how the beta test goes, right? So. There, there, there is obviously behavior that's, that happens when you actually test at scale that you're not going to detect when just having a few people, you know, messing around in, you know, a dev environment, right? And we discovered this with Akamon. We all knew this, but you want to be able to have a large, robust test environment and really you have a lot of users put the protocol through its paces so you can find any bugs that are related to performance and things like that when you, again, when you have a bunch of users using it. Essentially, when you're a victim of your own success, you can encounter problems. So we want to have those kind of good problems to have. So we're hoping to have a lot of participants in our in our C2C testnet like we did for the Akamon Bridge. So Now, I know the community is quite large. Um, during the Meld ISBO, you filled up, was it six stake pools? It was nine. Oh, it was more than nine? Nine? Nine, okay. Wow, okay, nine. So that's a lot of ADA. That's a lot of people that delegated their ADA to those particular pools. So I don't know how big your community is, but I can just imagine it's quite large. And the communication for them is very key. It's very important. But if people are interested, how can they join that community to learn more about the project? Well, Matt and I here are the lords of the Discord. So that's, uh, that's, that's the, our preferred avenue. But uh, there's also Telegram. Charlie's uh, good at manning the Telegram over there. So those are two uh, areas. I'd, I'd, I'm biased, of course, but the Discord has, a, a, I would say, a richer experience with all the features and bots you can incorporate in Discord. So that's a good way to keep on top of things. And both uh, Discord and Telegram have their announcement channels. So usually through pings on either one, you could find out what's going on almost as soon as it goes up on uh, as an article in Medium or something else. You can also find us, um, all of our socials are linked on our website, meld.com. And um, we put out announcements on Twitter as well, at melds underscore labs. And uh, yeah, uh, we try to put things out on Medium on a very regular basis. A lot of our info is on there. A lot of our announcements, like bigger announcements, go on Medium. So, and we'll, and we'll push that out through all the platforms. So it's a pretty rich ecosystem of communication and uh, we're always available for questions. Um, DM us, send us in, uh, info at meld.com. It's a good channel if you prefer email. So yeah, there's a lot of ways to reach us. Brilliant. I'll put all that in the show notes so everyone can find out a little bit more, engage with you guys. I'm looking forward to January this uh, next year and uh, actually playing around with the platform on live and taking out my first DeFi loan. Hell yeah. Oh yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, people. All the links and references on our website at learncardano.io. If you want to find out a little bit more or follow up the links or join the conversation, you can do so on our website. I highly recommend that you check it out. Now, if you're listening to this on the audio podcast as well on Apple Podcasts, you'll find a little link there that will take you to the website so you can join in on the conversations and engage with the community there as well. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving me that thumbs up, click subscribe, click on that notification bell, and I have a lot more Kadana related content for you coming right up. I'll see you in the next video. Yeah, yeah, gotta do it like that. You've been listening to the Learn Cardano podcast. Gotta get it hype. Crypto is what we like. But this is not investment or financial advice. Gotta do your research, cause it's risky. We know it is. This show is educational and it's informative. Crypto's the future, really, it ain't no debate.